some people associate the structure of the neural network of the language model with the nervous system. And I think that's the wrong intuition. Um, the neural networks are unlike nervous system. They are more like um, hundred step functions that use um, differentiable linear algebra to approximate the uh, correlation between adjacent brain states. It's basically a function that moves the step uh, system from one representational state to the next representational yeah. state. And so it's uh, if you try to map this into a metaphor that is closer to our brain, imagine that you would take uh, a language model or a model like DALI uh, that you use, for instance, with image, guide, image guided diffusion to approximate a camera image and use the activation state of the neural network to interpret the camera image, which in principle I think will be possible very soon. Mm -hmm. um, you do this periodically. And uh, now you look at these patterns, how when this thing interacts with the world periodically uh, look like as uh, in time. And these time slices, they are somewhat equivalent to the activation state of the brain mm -hmm. at a given moment. How is the actual brain different? Just the asynchronous craziness? Uh, for me, it's fascinating that they are so vastly different and yet in some circumstances produce somewhat similar behavior. Right. And uh, the brain is, first of all, different because it's a self-organizing system where the individual cell is an agent that is communicating with the other agents around it and is always trying to find some solution. And all the structure that uh, pops up is emergent structure. So one way in which you could try to look at this is that individual neurons probably need to get a reward so they become trainable, which means they have to have inputs that are not affecting the metabolism of the cell directly, but they are messages, semantic messages that tell the cell whether it has done good or bad and in which direction it should shift its behavior. Right? When, once you have such an input, neurons become trainable and you can train them to perform computations by exchanging messages with other neurons. And parts of the signals that they are exchanging and parts of the computation that are performing are control messages that perform management tasks for other neurons and other cells. I also suspect that uh, the brain does not stop at the boundary of neurons to other cells, but there are many adjacent cells will be involved intimately in the functionality of the brain and uh, will be instrumental in distributing rewards and um, in uh, managing its functionality. It's uh, fascinating to think about what those characteristics of the brain enable you to do yes. that language models cannot do. So like, first of all, it's there's a different loss function at work when we learn. Yeah. And uh, to me, it's fascinating that you can build a system that looks at 800 million pictures and uh, captions and correlates them, mm -hmm. because I don't think that a human nervous system could do this. For us, the world is only learnable because the adjacent frames are related. And we can afford to discard most of that information during learning. We basically take only in stuff that makes us more coherent, not less coherent. And our neural networks are willing to look at data that is not making the neural network coherent at first, mm -hmm. but only in the long run. By doing lots and lots of statistics, eventually patterns become visible and emerge. And um, our mind seems to be focused on finding the patterns as early as possible. Yeah, so filtering early on, yes. not later. Yes, so it's a slightly different paradigm and it leads yeah. to much faster convergence. So we only need to look at a tiny fraction of the data to become coherent. And of course, we, we do not have the same richness as uh, our trained models. We, are, we will not incorporate the entirety of text in the internet and be able to refer to it and have all this knowledge available and being able to confabulate over it. Instead, we have a much, much smaller part of it that is more deliberately built. And to me, it would be fascinating to think about how to build such systems. It's not obvious that they would necessarily be more efficient than us on a digital substrate, but I suspect that they might. So I suspect that the actual AGI that uh, is going to be more interesting is going to use slightly different algorithmic paradigms or sometimes massively different algorithmic paradigms than the current generation of uh, transformer-based learning systems.